Hey, it's Dr. Nissi, and in this one, I am going to try to answer the question, how long does THC marijuana weed stay in your system and can be detected on a urinalysis if you are a heavy user? And right away, so that I don't waste anyone's time, I am going to define what a heavy user is. So for the purpose of this video, a heavy user is gonna be anyone that uses THC marijuana three or more times per week. So if you use less frequently than that, then this is not the video for you. Check out my other videos on either moderate or light users. And I'm also gonna put chapters in the description so you can skip ahead to the testing times if you would like, but I would highly recommend not skipping ahead until I explain the different variables that are gonna help determine the testing times. All right, and just to be doubly clear, this video is about detection times in a urinalysis. I've done previous videos on saliva testing, blood testing, hair testing, if you're interested in anything other than the urine test and detection times for a urinalysis, please see one of those other videos. All right, so before I get all the way into it, if you could please just take one second to go down, click the like button. I'm trying to get this information out to as many people as possible. And clicking that thumbs up, that like button, really helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people so they become informed as well. And if you are interested in drug testing related videos, pre-employment medical videos and updates, please stay subscribed to this channel whenever an update comes down from the FM CSA or the federal government, I make an update video. All right. So today I'm going to give you my best estimate for how long THC marijuana can be detected in a urinalysis, but please be aware that this is my best estimate and there is no way for me to give you exact testing times. So use this as information only, and as always, the best way to know if you are going to pass a drug test is to home test several times leading up to that official test. And I will leave a link in the description box below for my preferred home drug test. All right, and first, let me show you this chart directly from the federal government, and it shows both saliva and urine testing time windows. And if you look down at the marijuana section, you can see that in a urinalysis, marijuana can be detected for as little as three days all the way up to over two months. And there have been reports of individuals testing way longer than two months, but these are generally outlier cases. So how long THC marijuana is detectable on a urinalysis is dependent on a few different factors. How heavy, how frequently you use, your body fat percentage, how much body fat you are carrying around, and to a degree, your activity level. So in this video, we need to break individuals up into different groups based on their activity level, their body fat percentage, and how frequently they use. So there are five different heavy user types. First, the heavy user that's overweight and inactive, so no exercise, not the healthiest diet. And again, by overweight, I mean having a high body fat percentage. So you may wanna use a body fat percentage scale to determine this. Number two is the heavy user that's overweight but active, so exercises, maybe tries to eat healthy. And again, regular sustained exercise should help clear you of THC a little quicker, but I highly recommend not beginning an exercise program just before a drug test, and I have done a full video on why. Number three is the heavy user that's normal weight but inactive. Number four is the heavy user that's normal weight and exercises. Number five is the heavy user that's fit and exercises often. All right, so now we've got to talk some science, and these are facts that are going to be true for all user types. So when you smoke a joint or have about that much marijuana enter your system, your urine THC level will very quickly raise to 180 nanograms per milliliter. And I will link below the study where I'm getting this information. Since most urine tests look for a cutoff of 50 nanograms per milliliter, you will immediately test positive. Now, the THC half-life, that is the amount of time for the concentration to be cut in half varies 
based on how heavy of a user you are from one and a half days all the way up to seven days depending on if you are a light, a moderate, or a heavy user. And this will be used in part to determine how long you will test positive. So to get under 50 nanograms per milliliter in this case, you will need to take 180 divided by two gets you to 90 nanograms per milliliter, but that still will make you test positive. So you have to divide that in half again to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. And that will take between three and 14 days, depending on, again, if you are a light, moderate, or a heavy user. And remember, because THC is fat soluble, it can be absorbed by body fat. So the more body fat you have, the more likely you are to be able to re-release THC in concentrations high enough for you to test positive for a longer period from when you stopped using. All right, so now I'm going to go through each different user type and give you my prediction for how long THC marijuana will be detectable on a urinalysis in each individual case. So once you know what type of user you are, feel free then to skip ahead to that section of the video. So first up, we have the heavy user that's overweight and inactive. So Lexington here has a medical marijuana card and he smokes daily. He's fairly sedentary and he is five foot nine and 300 pounds. So this will be the longest testing window as we have multiple factors working against the quick metabolism of THC. The THC half-life is estimated to be around seven days in heavy using individuals. And remember, I'm considering heavy use individuals to use three or more times per week. So in this case, it will take a minimum of 14 days to metabolize the THC after stopping use. Again, the half-life calculation being 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose, divided in half to get the 90, that takes seven days. We have to divide that 90 in half again to get the 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. So that takes a total of 14 days. But seeing as the THC will also build up in fat tissue and be released in the coming weeks without the advantage of being broken down more quickly with exercise, this is going to be a long testing window. So my estimation for Lexington is that he could test positive for two months or longer. Next up, the heavy user that's overweight but active. So Ron smokes every Thursday through Sunday. He's been playing basketball four nights per week for the past six months. He's six foot one and 230 pounds. So this user will have the slight advantage, and I do mean slight advantage, of being active. And this will generally lead to body fat being broken down a little quicker and THC from that fat being released into the bloodstream and metabolized a little quicker. The heavy user will still have the longest THC half-life at seven days. So again, remember the 180 nanogram per milliliter urine concentration after using, we have to divide that in half to get to 90. That takes seven days. And we have to divide that in half again to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. So that takes a total of 14 days. The THC will still be stored and released back into your bloodstream the more body fat that you have. So this is slightly mitigated by being active. So for Ron, I would estimate that he could test positive for up to two months. So next up is the heavy user that's normal weight but inactive. So here's Riley. She is a daily user and she doesn't have time because of her busy shooting schedule to work out consistently. She's five foot 10 and 160 pounds. So with a smaller body fat percentage, this user will not be able to store and then later release THC in as large of concentrations for as long as the overweight user. They do, do still have the longest half-life due to their heavy use. So again, remember 180 nanograms per milliliter divided by two to get the 90, that takes a week. We have to divide that in two again to get the 45 nanogram per milliliter, so under the limit, and that takes two weeks after stopping use. 
a normal weight individual will still retain significant THC in fat tissue that can be re-released -re later, which may again drive the urine concentrations over that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. So I would estimate that Riley is clear around six weeks after stopping use. Next up is the heavy user that's normal weight and exercises. So Peter smokes daily after he gets off. In his job, he gets plenty of exercise. He's six foot and 180 pounds. So this user is going to likely test negative in a shorter time period because of the regular physical activity, continuously breaking down body fat so the THC stored can be metabolized a little more quickly. So his half-life is still going to be seven days. So remember 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose. We have to divide that in half to get to 90. That takes a week. We have to divide that again in half to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under the limit. That takes two weeks. Fat will still store and release THC, which could drive urine concentrations over that 50 nanograms per milliliter for weeks, but the exercise should help a little. So my estimate here is he will test clean in about four to six weeks. So finally, we have the heavy user that is fit and active. So here's Jenna, she smokes a few times per week. She gets plenty of physical activity and she's five foot two, 118 pounds. So a slim and fit user with a low body fat percentage that uses regularly is probably the most difficult to estimate for. They have the longest half-life at seven days, but also have little fat to store and then release THC at a later time. So remember, the half-life calculation of 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose, we have to divide that in half to get to 90. That takes a week. We have to further divide that in half to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter, and that takes two weeks after stopping use. So for Jenna, I would estimate that she could likely pass at the earliest two weeks after stopping use up to a month after stopping use. And that's it, short and sweet. I hope this video was helpful, useful, and informative. Stay subscribed here. And until next time, everybody, stay safe.